This presentation will focus on the impact and relevance of subsistence activities have on, in the lives of Alaska Natives. I will do research on the value that its subsistence activities have regarding cultural identity and social identity. The research included examining studies on the benefits that traditional has on mental and physical health, the relevance of subsistence gathering and coordination with preservation of culture and communities, and how individual choice regarding subsistence affects communities, as well as looking at how even though the tools and equipment for these activities are modern Western inventions, this does not affect the relevance of the activities themselves. And the importance that traditional ecological knowledge has in understanding ecological systems and caring for them, focusing specifically on the spiritual aspect of the Alaska Native beliefs to see how this impacts cultural identity. I will examine how partaking in traditional beliefs and subsistence activities both benefit and segregate Alaska Native cultures from Euro-Western cultures. I will also examine the benefits this has on a person's self-importance, individuality, and sense of identity. I will also touch base on how the practice of traditional activities inhibit globalization and the benefits of thereof. Not only will I look at the many health benefits that subsistence activities provide, but I will also look at the benefits that it has regarding a person's identity gained from heritage, but as well as the identity in the community. Growing up in Sweden, my family mainly lived off meat through subsistence gathering. My father would hunt moose every fall and winter, and we would fish during the spring and summer. One year, my, fee my family even had a garden where we grew potatoes and carrots. Naturally, because gardening is very time-consuming, we didn't continue this. We humans are generally a part of a society that is focused on time and money. Time costs money, and money is a way of life. But what is the drive for this? Where do we find our own purpose in this system? Even though my father worked hard as a professional, this was not his main identity. He found pride and solace in his hunting activities while he was providing for his family. This purpose is something that money could not purchase for him. After graduating, I moved to Alaska in pursuit of getting closer to my roots and to familiarize myself with my Alaska Native heritage. I quickly learned that the subsistence lifestyle that I was accustomed to in Sweden was enlarged in the culture that I moved to. While living with my grandparents, who practiced their cultural traditions daily, I quickly learned that the many aspects of a subsistence lifestyle that make it imperative to the people of the culture. My father would bring me out hunting and fishing, so naturally I grew, I grew to love being in nature. There is a certain calming effect of removing yourself from the stressful environment of a concrete jungle. This is just one of the many benefits of practicing subsistence activities. Some of the other benefits of a subsistence lifestyle include more nutritious foods, a more active and thus healthier lifestyle, and strengthening a cultural identity by connecting to a heritage. Searles writes, eating and the exchange of food figure prominently in this, figure prominently in this symbolic const construction of both cultural identity and individual autonomy. The Inuit people of Nunavut place high value and importance on their subsistence activities, especially the food because this is a distinction between their culture and the Western culture that has moved into their area. This sense of autonomy that Searles mentions, the need for an independence and being distinguished from the Western cultures is most, most likely written in a time when the school systems were being established in rural Alaska and the mistreatment towards native that ensued. Lee also writes about the cultural identity that is strengthened through native foods. She writes about a native woman who, like many others, had relocated from the village in rural Alaska to urban life. While visiting the village, the woman would bring donuts and trade them for native food. She would then return to her urban home and invite friends and family over to feast. Lee writes, It is native foods that bind her urban friends to each other and to the rural villages where they were born. These urban women who were surrounded by Western culture valued their native foods because it was a significant thing to partake in together, connecting back to their roots. During my years of seeking independence, I moved out and was not living with either my parents or grandparents for the first time. This also meant that I did not have access to any subsistence meats, mostly because I don't like the taste of store-bought meats. I decided to be vegetarian. 
Searles writes about the nutritional value that subsistence food have. In one example, he writes about an Inuit man that had become accustomed to eating a diet that included both Western and Inuit foods, whereas there was less of the latter. The man states that the diet he is eating is making him feel more lethargic compared to the strict Inuit diet he consumes while he is at hunting camp. Searles concludes, Inuit foods provide strength, warmth, and energy in ways that Kutlanut, Western foods, do not. Claims that are supported by nutritional studies conducted on Inuit foods. Searles is referencing a study conducted by Kunlein in Sueda in 1992 that examined the nutritional values of traditional foods of Inuit and compared them to Western foods. Perhaps it is because the foods of the Inuit are from wild animals that have strong bodies in themselves. Perhaps it is because the animals in farms don't eat quality foods and their meats are highly processed. But studies support that traditional Alaska native foods are of higher nutritious quality compared to Western foods. Another factor to why the Inuit man that Searles mentions above feels lethargic while not at hunting camp is because there is no need for him to be active. To practice subsistence activities, you need to put in hard physical work that may include hiking, working with your arms and hands, lifting heavy things, and similar activities. The fact that it is good physical exercise to partake in subsistence activities is another benefit of subsistence foods. One might want to argue that Alaska Natives are not practicing traditional subsistence activities, and to some extent this may be true. Many individuals have the luxury of snow machines, bigger boats with powerful motors, fancier nets, fancier camps, fancier clothing and gear, and guns. These are tools and equipment that are not traditional and the means of subsistence activities have adapted to the tools. All these tools and equipment that definitely aid in practicing subsistence activities also point towards an important factor, the power of individual choice. If an individual can afford paying for all the tools and means mentioned above, they must be having an income that suggests that they don't necessarily need to practice subsistence activities in order to survive. Compared to Alaska Native ancestors who practice subsistence for survival, the purpose of subsistence activities is slightly different for today's generation of Alaska Natives. A purpose that can be found in the benefits of subsistence activities which were mentioned in the previous section. Actually, John Cruz stated in a study done on the Inupiat people of the North Slope that individuals who had wage employment were more likely to practice subsistence activities. The means for subsistence activities have become more expensive because the tools and equipment are expensive. It, that's if you want modern and efficient ones. And thus, it takes money to practice these activities. Although subsistence activities are not of the same purpose and to some extent are not being practiced traditionally, the activities are still important. Hun writes, subsistence activities are integral to the life of families and communities, an aspect of their identity and continuity expressed in subsistence work. These activities are beyond survival from day to day. They have adapted to cultural continuity, the survival of a culture. In my opinion, subsistence activities are imperative not only to a cultural identity, but also the relationship that an individual has with nature. Alaska Natives believe that nature and all that is in it has person-like traits that are similar to the personalities of humans. Stransky writes about the relevance of respect in Alaska Native cultures. He writes, not only respect for each other, for which most, if not all, Native cultures are known, but respect for the creations of Earth. This includes not just the animate, visible creations of the earth, but the spirits of the mountains, rivers, lakes, and sky. Stransky is describing the Alaska Native view of nature, that what Western cultures would view as animate creations, Alaska Natives view them as being with spirits. Because the Alaska Natives see them as spirits and personas, they have a great virtue and respect for all creations. Bernhardt and Kowagli writes, he, the Alaska Native Elder, explained that in those days the relationship between the hunter and the hunted was much more intimate than it is now. Here an elderly man is talking about how Alaska Native hunters used to have a much more intimate connection and understanding for all creation, creations in nature. This connection and understanding leads to a great respect for nature, something that Western cultures need to adopt. 
the western the, the understanding is rooted in knowledge that has been passed down from one generation to the other while practicing subsistence activities alaska native spends lots of time in nature observing animals and weather patterns which leads to something called traditional ecological knowledge this knowledge is a compilation of understandings that has been passed down from one generation to the other the respect that Alaska Natives have for nature is, inc is incorporated into this ecological knowledge. Barnhart and Kawagli writes about traditional ecological knowledge and writes about how Alaska Natives would educate the younger before school systems were Im implemented. They describe how a father brings his sons out to teach them how to hunt caribou by allowing them to observe how he does it and then let them try. In Alaska Native cultures, the elders teach the younger by showing and telling. Fiona Perotum reiterates this teaching technique of show and tell. She writes, along with the elders' emphasis on good listening and careful attention to the instructions they received, they also encouraged young people to care carefully observe and participate in all camp activities. This process of pass passing down knowledge from one generation to the other aids in strengthening the connection in one's cultural roots. It is imperative for the continuation of a culture. So in conclusion, subsistence activities may have changed and adapted as Western cultures have been integrated into Alaska Native cultures. The tools and equipment may have changed the way that subsistence activities are practiced, making them more efficient and also expensive. But the values regarding subsistence activities are the same. Subsistence activities are practiced for the survival of a culture. They are practiced in order to reconnect with a heritage that is being drowned by Western cultural influences. Alaska Natives are engaging in subsistence activities because it strengthens their cultural identity. Engaging in subsistence activities also strengthens an understanding and respect for nature that does not exist in Western cultures. This respect helps create a balance between humans and nature, where we take care of each other. Even though subsistence activities are not the same as they traditionally were, they are imperative for the continuity of Alaska Native cultures. The activity strengthens a cultural identity within Alaska Natives and thus strengthens their, com their confidence as individuals. In many ways, Alaska Native cultures have a lot to offer in understanding each other and understanding nature, and we can see a lot of this in subsistence activities. <laughs>